Coming up, Oxford Square memorializes victims of lynching in the same place it memorializes Confederate soldiers. This and more next. Newswatch Ole Miss starts now. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Mason CNO. Ole Miss students planning to graduate this May found out Wednesday just when they'll be doing it. As the university announced the full schedule of commencement ceremonies taking place the weekend of April 29th to May 2nd. May 2020 graduates who never enjoyed their in-person ceremony will also get to do so the following weekend, May 6th through 8th. Morning convocation for 2021 graduates will be held at 8 a.m. on May 1st in Bart Hemingway Stadium, while the 2020 convocation is set for the same time and location on May 8th. For additional details, visit commencement.olemiss.edu. With controversy surrounding the Oxford Square's historic Confederate monument, the city is hoping to erect a new lynching memorial on the Lafayette County Courthouse lawn. The Board of Aldermen approved the revised language for the marker earlier this week, solidifying the next step for approval. Member of the Lynching Memorialization in Lafayette County, Mississippi Committee Reverend Duncan Gray says they worked with the Board of Aldermen on the plans for this monument. He says he supports the new marker, even with the uncertainty of the lynching victims' backgrounds. Here's not the actions of these seven individuals. We take no uh, plead ignorance as to the, their guilt or not. The issue is being um, uh, that whole legal process being short-circuited. And that's the focus of the marker. The text for the monument has been approved by the Board of Supervisors, but if it is erected, it'll reside right here in the heart of the city. University Associate Professor of History and African American Studies, Dr. Shanette Garrett Scott, explains why this is important for the victims and their families. We really do have to, you know, privilege the voices of these family members and how they feel because for so long um, their loved ones have, you know, been um, erased uh, from history um, in, in, in very brutal ways. So the proposal was approved by the Mississippi Department of Archives and History and now only needs final consent from the Board of Supervisors. Grayson Gordon, Newswatch will Miss. The group expects this marker's construction to happen this summer. An exact location has not been finalized. In recent weeks, Ole Miss students have reported paying up to $60 in cover charges to get into the bars downtown. Discussion around the issue has increased since posts on January 15th from at Strike the Bars Oxford went viral on Instagram. The post called for the Ole Miss student body to come together for a common cause and fight the corruption of high covers. These matters have stemmed from the pandemic and the increase in larger crowds since last semester. The Lafayette County Sheriff's Department has a man in custody related to the shooting on January 22nd on County Road 215. 41-year-old Patrick P.J. Pegas of Oxford was charged with a felony for possession of firearm, possession of stolen firearm, and aggravated assault. The arrest came after sheriff deputies responded to Baptist Hospital in Oxford for a victim with a gunshot wound. Pegas was arrested on January 25th and is being held on a $50,000 bond. COVID-19 rages on, and the Oxford Board of Aldermen are discussing ways to make commerce easier downtown. In its meeting earlier this week, the board discussed a potential makeover on East Jackson Avenue, consisting of new sidewalks and a permanent outdoor dining space. The proposed sidewalk changes widen the north and south sides of East Jackson Avenue. The outdoor dining proposal comes after the city began offering outdoor dining on the square near the end of 2020 to reduce the strain of pandemic regulations on local restaurants. The plan does cut 28 of the current 45 parking spots available along Jackson Avenue, but Mayor Robert Tannenhill expressed her support for the project, saying that once COVID-19 restrictions will ease, there will be a permanent bump in total capacity. No official decisions were made on the project and no timetable was set, but the board plans to review the project and discuss funding in its February 2nd meeting. Expecting lower temperatures and evening showers this weekend. Find out more on Stormwatch. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. 
My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Each year, hurricanes and major flooding threaten cities, towns, and rural homes across the Gulf states. So chances are there will be more storms and floods near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Welcome back to Stormwatch. I'm Alexandra Watts giving you your current temperatures. As we take a look all the way across the tri-state, we have 52 degrees. And then as for Tupelo, 54 degrees. Looking at to tonight's temperatures, we have a high of 48 degrees, partial cloudy skies, winds from the southeast about 0 to 5 miles per hour, and then some rain coming in at 40%. Looking into tomorrow, tomorrow's forecast, we have a high of 46 cloudy skies, winds coming in from the southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then looking at our weekend headlines, the temperatures are slowly starting to drop for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to expect some showers for the rest of the weekend, but the sun is going to slowly come back out Sunday evening and then for the rest of the week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ole Miss men's basketball struggled on the hardwood Wednesday night against the Arkansas Razorbacks in Fayetteville. Communication issues in the first minute and a half forced Coach Davis to call timeout after a baseline dunk gave the Razorbacks an early lead. Ole Miss forced four turnovers in the first half, but Arkansas doubled down on the Rebel defense, creating some separation going into the locker room with a 37-25 lead. The Rebels forced 12 turnovers, but a strong defensive showing and Jarkel Joyner surpassing his 1,000 career point mark would not be enough to clinch the win for Ole Miss. Shooting 44% from the floor 15 games into the season led to disappointment for Coach Kermit Davis with the 59-74 road loss to the Razorbacks. Here's what Coach Davis had to say about his squad after the loss. We've got to win games in the high 50s and 60s. It's where we are. It is where we're 15 games in. It's, it's a pretty good sculpture of who you are as a team. Ole Miss football has announced their schedule for the 2021-2022 season. And things will look different from the all-SEC schedule we just experienced due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can expect to see several interesting matchups next season, including our season opener against Louisville in Atlanta on September 6th, the Tulane Green Wave at home in mid-September, and facing Hugh Freeze and his Liberty Flames in early November. These games, along with matchups against our fellow SEC opponents, should make for an interesting fall on the road and at Vault Hemingway, to say the least. After a turbulent first season for Coach Kiffin and a victorious bowl win over Indiana, the Ole Miss Rebels are riding the lane train into next season. Ole Miss men and women's track and field will head to Fayetteville this weekend to take on a handful of other high-powered squads in the Arkansas invite. The Rebel men and women's track and field has a high-powered squad of their own, with the women ranked at number 29 and the men at number 32. Ole Miss won two SEC titles in 2020 in the women's weight throw and the men's distance medley relay. The Rebels had eight student athletes qualify for the NCAA Indoor Championships who all earned All-American honors following the cancellation of the national meet due to the pandemic. 
All of these star athletes return for the 2021 season, and we can expect strong showings for the Rebels going forward. Head soccer coach Matt Mott has added a strong defensive talent with the signing of Canadian goalkeeper Alyssa Zalek. Zalek was awarded the 2018 LESEQ Golden Glove Award, which recognizes the best goalkeeper in Quebec. She also helped lead Lakeshore SC to provincial championships and national silver medals in both 2018 and 2019. She spent one season at Veneer College in Montreal, but the Cheetahs did not compete due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can hope to see Zalek take to the pitch for the 2021 season. And finally, for some national sports news from the week, the Houston Texans hired David Culley of the Baltimore Ravens as their head coach. Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson officially asked for a trade out of Houston. And LeBron's Lakers received their first road loss of the season, courtesy of the 76ers on Wednesday night. That's all for sports. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Newswatch underscore UM and on Instagram at Newswatch Ole Miss for the latest on Rebel Sports. A way to give back. With COVID-19 consuming our lives, the city is still finding ways to support the community. That when we return. I just found out my work party is a plus one. You want to go? This is my boss, Ella. Nice to meet you, Greg. <laughs> you're welcome. Nope, I'm high. But I'll clean the kitchen while you're gone. You're already making good decisions when you're high. Pool party at Jesse's. Can you drive? I'm toasted. Nope, I'm high. But I can order us a ride. Don't make an exception when it comes to driving. If you feel different, you drive different. The Board of Aldermen gives back to the Oxford Community Market. Normally, the city would have collected the $1,100 that was donated over six months. The market uses this money to pay rent for the old armory pavilion where the market is hosted. The Board of Aldermen voted to waive its portion of rental fees for 2020 and for the next five years. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. Make sure to follow our social media pages for all updates. I'm Mason Ciano. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend.